Good morning, folks. We're uh, going to go ahead and start with a few announcements this day of Pentecost. Um, the most important and biggest one being a big word of thanks to the many sponsors of our beautiful geraniums this year. Thank you so much to those who have done that. Uh, those names and dedications are listed on an insert in the bulletin. And the only other thing I would say about them is that we do ask you please to take them along today because we sure don't want them to dry out or have any problems. And again today, each flower is listed with a name. So at one time it used to be, you know, we just take a flower, it didn't really matter. We do have each one, Yolanda has each one uh, labeled with names. And what she's done is to group together those who have sponsored more than one. So when you find you know, one with your name, if you sponsored six of them, let's say, as some people did, they should all be grouped there together. And uh, so thank you, and please do be sure to take those along with you today. Um, I also wanted to say thank you to, uh, most of them are not here, unfortunately, just yet, but the members of Senior Choir who are singing today, and this will be our final anthem of the year as we move into summer mode, then we do uh, give up practicing until the fall. So again, thank you to them for a, a really good year, and especially to Carol, our director, and to Judy, our accompanist, who are really the reason why things go well. It takes a great team like that. So I want to thank them very much. Um, as we move into summer, if you have music that you would like to share during worship on Sunday morning, please let me know or let Judy know. Music of any kind is welcome vocal, instrumental, whatever the case may be. And please be giving some thought whether come fall, it might be a time for you to give senior choir a shot. Uh, ask again me or Carol or Judy, uh, we'd be happy to talk with you more about that. Tomorrow night, Monday evening, 6.30 p.m., final Strawberry Festival planning meeting uh, taking place right here at the church, 6.30 for all those who are interested and available. Tuesday evening, the 22nd, at 7 p.m., Ms. Laurie will be having a VBS planning meeting to go over the themes and kind of the big picture of Vacation Bible School, which is coming up at the end of July. Next Sunday, notice that that's the beginning of our summer schedule, as well as the beginning of our outdoor worship. So next week, we will have adult Sunday school at 845. That's going to be downstairs in the conference room, downstairs. At 9.30, we will have both worship and Sunday celebration time with Miss Laurie for those in grades four and younger. Uh, grades five and above, our, our plan, our expectation is that those young persons would, would be in worship uh, with the rest of us. But uh, celebration time, Sunday celebration, grade four and down will be also at 9.30. Next week is our first outside worship, so you know what that means, be sure to bring that sweater along, bring a couple layers, whatever, you know, if you tend to, to run on the cool side, it's better to gamble that it's gonna be chilly here and come prepared. Um, there's a work night for Strawberry Festival the following week, details about that in the bulletin. There are also details about the festival donation sheet, which is posted downstairs on the foyer bulletin board. The key difference being that for most everything, we are seeking financial donations uh, toward the bulk purchasing, which is a much better use of those, those hard-earned dollars that you and I contribute. The exceptions, of course, are the baked goods, especially things that we, we do need, obviously, the, the real object for the festival, and there is a place to sign up for those as well. If you customarily uh, are a part of the poster committee, the posters are available. We have a bunch of colors, Strawberry Festival posters in the usual spot on the windowsill in the office. So I believe everyone delivering posters knows who they are. Uh, they know how many they normally pick up and they know where they normally are, which is that back windowsill sort of behind the desk in the office. Please be sure to pick those up. Feel free to pick them up today. Finally, on our prayer list, a couple of updates and additions. We want to remember this week Elaine Henninger who is with us this morning, but who will be undergoing outpatient orthopedic surgery on her elbow on Thursday. Also, Doris Schaefer, who is also with us, who will be having outpatient surgery on Tuesday, 
and Holy Spirit for further skin cancer removal uh, on her face. And because of that delicate area of operating, they will be putting Doris under general anesthesia. And so we, we certainly uh, pray for good healing, good outcomes for both Doris and for Elaine. Also, we want to continue to remember Sandy Paul, who, as is the norm anymore, had outpatient surgery this past week, did quite well. Uh, the, the skin cancer in her case was fully removed. The plastic surgery procedure went well on Thursday. When we spoke the other day, she said it did kind of look like she came out on the losing end of a heavyweight boxing match. So I wasn't necessarily expecting we would see her just today. But the outcomes were good and the promise of healing is a favorable one. So we give thanks for that. And with that then we'll turn to Judy for our prelude this Pentecost day. taking time together to acknowledge the reality of our brokenness 
and to experience the reconciliation of God's amazing grace. We begin on page 94 in the very front of the red hymnal. Please turn to page 94 in the small numbers at the bottom, and please stand. We worship this day in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us now confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Let us pray. Mighty God, you breathe life into our bones, and your spirit brings truth to the world. Send us the spirit, transform us by your truth, and give us language to proclaim your gospel. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as Amy tackles that uh, favorite reading of all lectures everywhere that doesn't have a single difficult word in it. The first reading is from Acts 2, verses 1 through 21. Originally, Pentecost was a Jewish Thanksgiving type festival celebrated seven weeks after Passover. On this particular Pentecost, however, the Holy Spirit is poured out upon the entire community of believers, just as Jesus has promised and the scriptures had prophesied. Empowered by the Spirit, the entire community bears witness to God's activity in multiple languages. When the day of Pentecost had come, Apostles were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 104. Let us read responsibly. How manifold are your works, O Lord! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. There go the ships to and fro, and Leviathan, where you may be the sport of it. All of them look to you, to give them their freedom and disease. You give it to them, they gather it, you open your hands, and they are filled with good things. When they rise your face, they are terrified. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their rest. You send forth your spirit, and they are created. And so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. The Lord rejoices in all your works. You look at the earth and it trembles. You touch the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please God. I will rejoice in the Lord. Blessed the Lord. The second reading is 
is from Romans chapter 8, verses 22 through 27. By pouring the Holy Spirit into our hearts, God gives us the promised first fruit of eternal life so that we await God's future in hope. In the meantime, the Spirit also intercedes for us by carrying the prayers of our weak human hearts to God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. Here ends the reading.
Sister Kelsey is front and center in our family gathering in worship this day as she makes affirmation of her baptism and is confirmed. So that is, as she first steps up and agrees to take on to herself the promises made by her parents and sponsors when we gathered right over there back on Sunday morning, October 19, 2003. As uh, Kelsey was not so big as I recall, and now here she is making those promises her own. And then, part two being, as we all join together in prayer that God will stir up the gifts of the Spirit already given to Kelsey in baptism and thereby confirm her faith. Now, the, the risk, I suppose, is that on a day when we so focus, rightly so, on the meaning of this moment, this day, in the journey of one of our young sisters in Christ, that we might miss out on the fact that affirming, saying yes, right, that's all that affirming means. It means we say yes to our baptisms, that that is, in fact, not just a once-a-year thing or a once-in-a-lifetime thing, but rather it is an ongoing thing for us all. In fact, it is a daily thing. In fact, it is a many, many times per day thing. Because in addition to occasionally joining together as a congregational family to affirm together our baptisms in words, as we will hear this morning, joining with Kelsey. What also happens is that the rubber really hits the road when worship ends, and we are confronted by situations in which we have the choice to do the godly thing or not. And in so doing, to say yes to God and the blessing of baptism that he has given us or not. We face those situations where we know that our calling is to do the godly thing, which involves grace, which involves mercy, which involves loving as God loves us, which, contrary to thought, doesn't always mean, you know, giving that sort of like half-minded smile. No, it means loving enough that at times we confront one another even. You know, in the name of God's love, we hold each other accountable. But through it all, the bottom line is God wants us to make the choice that builds up rather than tearing down. That is life-giving, life-affirming, rather than sucking away life. Many, many times per day, Within these walls, within the setting of a congregational family gathering, as well as outside these walls, where we spend most of our time, of course, we are faced with the opportunity to say yes to our baptismal promises or not. Tell you what, you know, since we're going to be going there in just a moment anyway, go ahead and turn in front of your, your red hymnal to page 236. Let's, let's go ahead and do that, if you would, please. Page 236. Again, we're going there to the small page numbers, the bottom of the page, the front part of the book, page 236. And there at the top of page 236, let's take a look at what it is that Kelsey is going to be affirming in words in just a bit but what we are also always being called to affirm with our lives. So do you see where it says affirmation in the presence of the assembly? This is what Kelsey is going to be saying, I, I aim to do this and I ask God to help and guide me. That is, to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper. So up until this point, we're talking about more or less what happens within these walls, right? So what Kelsey and we all are always being called on to promise is that when we are involved in things within these walls, worship and learning together, 
we will be about treating one another as God has first treated us. And then it starts to go out from there to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed. That begins to be not only about what happens in house, but the whole rest of the time out there where we spend our lives. Are we going to live in such a way that others see in us the grace and love of Jesus? To serve all people following the example of Jesus. Yikes, wow. Consider that one for a moment. There's no limitation, no saying those people that I like or those people that I get along with, sure, I'm going to treat them as God would want me to treat them, but not necessarily those other folks that I just don't get along with. No, it says, doesn't it, to serve all people following the example of Jesus. And then finally, to top it off and totally remove the bounds, to strive for justice and peace in all the so it's not only about what you and I do, you know, face to face, or right here in the valley, or right next to them. It's about the decisions that our government and other world powers make. It is about policies, and it is about living in such a way, remembering that what we do affects a whole planet. All God's people, all God's creation. It's, uh, it's breathtaking, I, I hope you'll agree, as I, think, as I think Kelsey found it as we were talking about it last week. It's, it's not a, a Sunday 10, 15, 11, 15 thing. It involves that, and unfortunately it can be easy sometimes right here to forget that, most especially, interestingly enough. But it in fact is 24-7, it is a whole world that is involved. Kelsey, you might say, has spent her whole life preparing for this day, for this moment. She's especially spent the past two years preparing for this day and for this moment, for the yes that she will surely be called upon to say. But as I am, what say the rest of us? What do we say? What do we say? to our fellow congregational family members? What do we say to those with whom we struggle with? You know, a person we just don't have good chemistry with, we, we've never been off, maybe our families have history, you know, and it's never simple, what do we say to them in the name of God? What do we say to all of God's creation? And those with whom we share near and far. Kelsey knows what she is ready to say in words this day. What will we follow up and say with our lives? Amen. Folks, I would ask you to please stay, uh, no, remain seated, I'm sorry, but please turn to page 234, so flip back one page. this sister, whom you have made your own by water and the word in baptism. You have called her to yourself, enlightened her with the gifts of your spirit, and nourished her in the community of faith. Uphold this, your servant, in the gifts and promises of baptism, and unite the hearts of all whom you have brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. And now, would you please stand, if able. As I ask you now to join with Kelsey in professing your faith in Christ Jesus, rejecting of sin, and confessing the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? I renounce the sin. Do 
you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. And you may be seated. of your faith. And so now I ask you, do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism? To live among God's faithful people. To hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper. To proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed. To serve all people following the example of Jesus. And to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. If that is your intention, please answer. I do and I ask God. And people of God, do you promise to support this sister and pray for her in her life in Christ? If so, let us answer. We do, and we ask God to help and guide us. We do, and we ask God to help and guide us. Would you please be us? Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give us new birth, cleanse us from sin, and raise us to eternal life. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Kelsey the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith, guide her life, empower her in her serving, give her patience in suffering, and bring her to everlasting life. Let us now rejoice with this new sister in Christ. We rejoice with you in the life of baptism. Together we will give thanks and praise to God and proclaim the good news to all the world. And let's give her a great embarrassing round of applause. And Kelsey, we present to you this day as as you step up and now take on that role as a full up adult member of this congregational family, the certificate, of course, that marks this day, the great great grandchildren will fight over that. And that will be one of those great mementos they'll be excited to have for great great grandma. We have also this year for the first time a three book set. That is the first time at confirmation. We have our two previous history books as well as the relatively brand new book telling the story of our congregational family. The beautiful Thriving Cross. I want to thank uh, Jack Little for uh, his uh, making those possible for us from Thriving. And we can't forget the offering envelopes, last but certainly not least, as again, a token that now you're full up and adult and have those responsibilities. Else. Congratulations, blessings. You may return. Before she gets too comfortable, let's go ahead and stand as we join in prayer. Filled this day with the Holy Spirit, we join with the church in every place, praying for the world that God so loves. Lord of life, you baptize your people with the fire of the Spirit. Grace your church everywhere with your visions and dreams so that as we testify, all will hear the gospel and call upon your saving name. Inspire and enable our centers of outdoor ministry this day, O oh God. Fill them with your spirit, the Kirkenwald, the Wachlund, the Little Farm, and Mount Luther. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. 
Your creating spirit renews the face of the earth, brings to birth new life in the earth's landforms and waters, awaken us from the slumber of neglect to show tender care for our home. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Your spirit swept over the waters and you created the human family, O God. Now we are divided, scattered like dry bones. Connect the nations with the strength of the Holy Spirit so that all will live in hope. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Your spirit sighs with every need, O God. Guide us in honoring the dignity of everyone and opening our lives to them. Pour your healing mercies into the lives of all who need your care and healing. Especially we lift up this day Doris and Elaine and Margaret and Warren and Ron and Marvin and Sue and Cora and Sandy and Martha and Helen and these persons whom we are bold to name before you, O Lord, while we're in silence. Hear us, O God. Your spirit has called and gathered this congregational family into life in Christ. Help us in our weakness, teach us to pray, search our hearts, and intercede for us, your beloved saints, according to your will. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. By your Holy Spirit, you have called and gathered people from every nation under heaven. Bless and strengthen our sister Kelsey in the baptismal promises she has affirmed this day. Gather her and us with all the saints at the heavenly banquet that has no end. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. By the sure guidance of your Holy Spirit, O God, we lift up our prayers in trust and thanksgiving through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Amen. We now take time to share that peace followed by the offering.
Holy God, gracious and merciful, to bring forth foods of your and nourish all creation. Turn our hearts toward those who hunger in any way, that all may know your care. And prepare us now to feast on the bread of life. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, he gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take any, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated.
you. The body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ for you. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ is shed for you. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you.
Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ which is for you.
folks, as uh, Jim finishes up uh, taking care of the communion table, we're going to uh, pause for a moment and uh, insert a photograph that we meant to do before the beginning of worship. And uh, things got busy and we missed doing that. So, Chelsea, would you please come forward and Louise will get our official photograph. Um, probably, Jim, would you? Boy, not, not to say you're not photogenic. I <laughs> <laughs> just um, want to step over to the side of the bird. He's, he's all but done. Okay. You want to wait? Or not? Thank you all, Jim. Please continue. Now, would you please stand for the blessing? The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen us and keep us in His grace. Amen. Thanks, Thanks to God. God.